In this video, I will talk about the exact command in Linux. So, let us understand the basics of this command and see 8 practical examples of using the exact command in the Ubuntu terminal. So, what is the exact command? The exact command in Linux is used to replace the current terminal process with a new command. It also executes specific programs or commands without creating a new process. So now let's talk about the basic syntax. Here is the basic syntax of the exact command given, which is you write the exact keyword first. After that, you mention the option. It can be single option or multiple options. Then you specify the arguments or the parameters. Also, to know about what options are available with the exact command, you can type the following command. This will show you the help page for the exact command on your Ubuntu terminal. Now, I will show you the different examples of using the exact command in your Ubuntu terminal. Starting with the example 1, where I will show you how to list the contents of your current directory using the long format. First, you need to execute the command bash. Then, you need to execute this command exec ls. Then, for the argument, give dash la. Now this will list all the contents of your current directory in long format. Now here is a catch. You need to execute the bash command first to create a new process, then execute the exact command since it does not itself create a new process for executing the command. Otherwise the terminal will be closed. In example 2, I will show you how to list all the environment variables and their values in your system. So let's see how it works. First, type the command bash. This will create a new process or a shell process. Now execute the exact command to print the environment variables. This lists all the environment variables with their values in your Ubuntu terminal. In example 3, I will show you how to call a program or a command within a bash script using the exact command. So let's see how it works. For this example, first I will create a script named script.sh. The nanotext editor pops up in the terminal. So now I will edit my script over here. Now what this script does is, it asks for a user input option. The user can press 1, 2 or 3 depending on what the user wants the script to function. If the user presses 1, the system will take an update. If the user presses 2, the system will get upgraded. And if the user presses 3, it will exit from the script. So now I will execute the script. It asks me to enter any of the above choice 1, 2 or 3. Suppose I want to update my system so I'll press 1. Now this asks for the user password so I'll enter the password. And the system will take an update so it will take some time. You can log the standard output and standard error within a bash script using the exact command. In this example, I will show you how to do it. So let's see how it works. So for this example, I will create a script named logging.sh. Now over here, I will edit my script. Now I'll save the script and now it's time to execute the script. After I execute the script, now I'll print the contents of the test file.log file. So I'll use the cat command. 
Now as you can see the first two line gets printed correctly. Now there is a problem with the third command because here instead of using the echo command I have intentionally written a wrong command which is the eho command. Now this is a standard error so it will also be displayed as a content of the test file.log file. In example 5, I will show you how to clean your system environment variables and values using the exact command along with the print env command and option c. So let's see how it works. At first, run the command print env. This will display the environment variable and their values of your current shell process. Now remember to type the command bash which will create a new shell process or a child process of your current shell process. Now it's time to clean the environment variables from this process. So I'll execute the command exec then option C after that print env. Now this will clean the system environment variables and their values. In example 6, I will show you how to search files and display their contents using the exact command along with other additional commands. Let's see how it works. Now suppose I want to search all the text files in the my folder directory which is inside the home directory of my system using the find command and transfer the output of this command as the input of the cat command using the exact command. So let's see how it works in a single command. You have to type this command. Now hit enter. This will display the contents of all txt file inside the my folder directory, which is inside the home directory. In example 7, I will show you how to search files and compress them using the exact command with other additional commands. So let's see how it works. Suppose I want to search for all files having the extension .log in my folder directory which is inside the home directory of my system using the find command and forward the output of this command to the input of the gzip command to compress the files. So let's see how the command looks. At first I will type ls my folder to see all the dot log files inside the my folder directory now i'll execute the command now this will compress all the dot log files in my folder directory to see the compressed files i will type the command the compressed files are labeled with red mark having the extension now dot log dot gz in the last example which is example 8 i will show you how to search files and change their file permission so let's see how it works suppose i want to search all dot log files in my folder directory which is inside the home directory of my system and change their file permissions to do so i will run a set of commands starting with After running this command, I am checking the file permission of all files inside my folder directory. Now I will execute the command to change file permissions. Now I will again check the file permissions of the .log files. As you can see, these are the log files file1.log, file2.log and file3.log. The file permissions had been added that is the executable permissions are being added so this was all for this video if you want to study further please refer to the article provided in the video description below thank you for watching and if you like our content please subscribe to our channel